Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. It's really early. Thank you for joining <laughs> us if you if you gonna, if you gonna tune in. Yeah, we'll really we'll see who joins us now. But what we really want is for y'all to be able to see this and talk to people at work and really just be prepared for this Thursday, which is the opening of Collective for the Culture Two, which is the second biannual mm -hmm. exhibition that me and Robert Hodge are doing. Um, mm -hmm. We're just really excited to present this to everyone. And so we just wanted to take a moment to talk to y'all about what we've been doing in the last year and this upcoming show on Thursday, as well as kind of some things you can look forward to um, throughout the rest of 2019. So uh, I'm just going to invite you to start and talk about the yeah. last year for you. I know you just had a show at the David Shelton Gallery. I did, I did. The show is still up to February 9th. Uh, and I'm very happy about it and excited about what's happening over there. Um, that show is called Lawyer in Theory, um, and and this is this show that we're talking about today is like you know it's our baby. Um, I, I'm not a practicing curator, but I I do understand well, curating. I true. do love it. Well, I, I am. But At you know, this I, point, you're definitely a practicing curator. Well, what I mean is I have a lot of respect for it. I don't throw around the word curator a lot just because it's a word you hear with everything. People are curating all kind of experiences, so I take it really seriously. Um, I'm really studying the craft of curating, how to interact and protect and uh, propel artists that I love in the city. And so uh, this show is about living legends that artists are, that are part of the fabric of Houston and then a new wave of artists who I, who I think is just spectacular and kind of bringing all those people and all those cultures in one space. So you don't have to go to East End to see my Latino artists or go to Maine to see, you know, my white comrades. Like I, I like to put everybody, all this mix of great art in a gumbo pot in one space and bring all these different demographics to one gallery. So, Hodge, last year we had Howard Sherman, David mm -hmm. McGee, Ignacio Sanchez, yeah. uh, Felipe Contreras, Donna Coro, and... Um, uh, you missing somebody? I'm missing Howard one person. Sherman. I said Howard Sherman. Okay. No, 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 this is so bad. Um, you already, like, warned me not to do this. <laughs> I, think, I think you got everybody, though. Okay. I think you got everybody. Um, well, anyways, uh, it was it was a really great show. And it's really it was a really great show. show. Okay, really, what I want to talk about is how that show and that curation process is leading into this one. Like, so I know in each show you make connections between those artists mm -hmm. and make sure we present like a dynamic group of various levels of yes, artists. Yeah. Um, Almost like every stage of being oh, an artist. Is kind Raul of, Gonzalez. I'm so sorry. You know I love Raul. Raul is the so. man. <laughs> Some of Texas stand up. I, we love Raul. Man, that guy is a hustler, man. Yes, yeah, spend so more much. time in Houston, please. Um, okay, anyway, so what I want to talk about is how does this list of artists build off of that show? Um, the same process. It's like um, I look at the artists, I look at how they connect, how can the show be cohesive. And this show is really dealing with um, physicality, material, um, uh, color always. And I think these, these works, these artists kind of connect and speak to each other in different ways. Like, for instance... Jesse Lie to me is so parallel with um, Patrick Renner, just in the the use of materials and wood and how he constructs his works and that broadness it has. And so everybody has this like kind of connects that might end. They're like six degree separation. So um, I don't want to give all the way everything. Cause I'm doing some writing about it and I want you to read it. But definitely um, they all connect and they all I think they all kind of touch all points of the city in a way that I would like you know. And some of the other parallels that I really liked are, you know, the introduction of newer, younger artists that mm -hmm. are kind of coming into the Houston scene and really like, you know, just the Texas artscape in general. So mm -hmm. it's like last year, you know, we had Nacho, Ignacio Sanchez. This year we have like um, Tyler Duvea. Yeah, yeah, um, And even within the parallels between that. So last year's scene was really like color, figure, and abstraction. Mm -hmm. This year we have a lot of collage. Um, yes mixed media uh, and really this show i think is most notable for the parallels that we're drawing between the anchor artists our mid-career artists and our emerging artists mm -hmm. there's just like strong notes and um even you know what i was thinking about actually so jesse using his like reclaim materials to create a totally new um piece yeah. in general really kind of remind me of tyler's work like the way he kind of is reclaiming digital images Absolutely. to create yeah. a new collage. Yeah, yeah. So that's like some of the more conceptual yeah. connections that I saw in this show. But, you know, some of the other things I want to talk about are just like where where we've gone in the last year um, since Collective for the Culture won, as well as where some of the artists have gone since then. So, um, you know, Raul went on to have several shows like throughout Houston following mm -hmm. that show. Um, 
Donna Poro as well. She had um, the George Washington Carver solo yeah. exhibit. Mm -hmm. David McGee has also been a curating artist at Winston Contemporary, yeah. where we'll be hosting the show. And just, I guess, a little bit of information about Winston is it's a new gallery. It's black owned. It's in the Rice Village. And we're just really excited to work with them and introduce this show. It's really important for us that through this exhibition, we are highlighting the heart of the city you know it's like the stuff that's really happening the things that the people that are really interested in following the culture should be involved in so like last year we did um our opening reception and then we had a bounce and turn following um anyone that knows me knows i'm like a huge bounce and turn fan but that was also really important for me then because the culture is definitely about art and music at the same time so hey, tell, them, tell them about bounce and turn like exactly what it is for okay. people who don't know I know, Amy's going to love this, and I always love doing Bounce and Turn shoutouts. Uh, so, Bounce and Turn is a monthly Southern rap party, and really, um, my good friend Amy Mueller, as well as um, her DJ partner, Kenny Evans, our big heavy Kenny, they work together to present this curated selection of alternative venues all throughout the city, as well as highlighting new artists that maybe don't get the chance to perform in traditional venues, as well as um, artists and DJs that have been doing this around the city, like DJ Shante, who was at Collective for the Culture One, and was just at the Bass Pound Center. So it's a really cool series. I definitely recommend all of y'all check it out. Um, this year we also will have a music component in what we're doing. Um, we are gonna have some performances, and there's also going to be some spoken word that happens during um what well, i guess the first one is february 9th so that's the saturday after the opening mm -hmm. and then um the next a lot one, of the program is planned that you know we're just gonna let you in see a little bit closer but it should be you know packed with some great programming yeah and that one is the the spoken word element is it's called pass it on and it's hosted by the outspoken being outspoken being what's up man yeah what's amazing up? poet <laughs> Amazing poet. I bought a poem from him at Fresh Arts Winter Arts Market, which is actually something that happened for me in the last year. I was one of the judges for their um, Winter Arts fe Winter fe Arts Market Festival. Where? Okay, Winter Holiday Art Market. There I'm just like too dyslexic to know what an acronym stands oh, for. That was early. <laughs> it's Literally really early. Like <laughs> okay, but I can't. I can't even like have an excuse because I've had lots of coffee. No. Uh, just a side note, I'm, I'm really excited about, and maybe I was, I was maybe romanticizing this idea with a curator does, but I really enjoy finding brand new artists. Like, this is Tyler's first exhibition, so I love, you know, working with artists that are brand new and then helping them navigate the art world and figuring out a plan because that, I just thought that was part of what a curator does, but a lot of curators um, don't pay attention to artists at the very beginning of their career. They have to achieve certain stages in their career then they get this kind of attention but I like going to dive bars small coffee cafes like I go anywhere good artists and look for great artists and try to see what, what, what direction they want to go in and just help them navigate that so I'm excited about that as long as, as well as the, the legends you guys know and that some people still don't know so it's like bringing, bringing together these various demographics like you know some people for some strange reason, might have never heard of Jesse Lott. So I'm excited about introducing this a young collector to Jesse Lott and vice versa. So I think that, you know, it's just a really exciting things that can happen when you mix all these different types of artists up and do it in a respectful and um, kind of creative way. So, um, yeah, please come on this Thursday, 7 to 9 p.m. Uh, the address is 2426 Barlet Street, um, Suite D. If I'm not, if you'll I'm correct. You'll see us. You'll, you'll see, see us. It. You know, it's going to be right. You know. Can't miss it. Can't miss Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Um, you know, I want to talk a little bit more about Tyler. So one of the things that I think is also really exciting about Collective for the Culture is also um, exciting about just kind of the trajectory that Black Widow Creative Agency is moving in. So most of y'all know we were activating the union. So we, we got it. We can't do this without food. But we were activating the union for six months last year, which is still active in the Washington Cultural Arts District. It's, you know, a great venue. Um, moving forward, we are going to be working primarily with artist services and our own alternative exhibitions throughout the city. Um, and then to launch 20 off, 2019 off, obviously it's this exhibition, but moving forward, we'll have another Collective for the Culture 3 coming this fall, so stay tuned for that. Mm -hmm. um, me and Hodge are working together uh, as artist and administrator, as well as administrator and curator for this particular show, so you'll see a lot more works from us in the next um, coming months, years future 
We got a lot going on. Um, Haj, I'm really going to force you to talk a little bit about your music because really the people need to know. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I've been working two years on a lot of um, uh, music that that's pretty much like a, um, a soundtrack to this exhibitions I've been doing with different various um, museums. And so um, last year, maybe was it 2016, 17, we did the Friendly Fire? Yeah, 16 going to 17. So it's been a while. So this record is finally coming out. Uh, we're going to drop it in uh, April for record day. Was, I think it's like April 4th. So it'll be coming out. And this record is called Friendly Fire. It's um put, it's paid for. And and, and uh, the Station Museum helped me make this a reality. But it has all type of visual artists that make music along with the artists that participate in that exhibition. So it has um, Forrest Prince, uh, Noah Emerson, Kaneem Smith, Robert Pruitt, Andrew Bum Twyer, um, um, Lance Flowers, Lovey Olivia, um, a, a, a lot of, I know I'm forgetting folks, a lot of musicians, really great album, it's, it's more experimental, but I'm really proud of it. And then, of course, I have this record called Two and a Half Years that's dropping in June, and so that dropped in 2016, but I add five to seven new songs every year, so it'll be five new songs dropping and June, and then in August will be the album I made with uh, Art Pace in 2017 that finally is done too. So all these albums have videos, and it was a lot of production I had to do, so it took a long time, and I was kind of self-financing, um, along with some you know people that believed in me, some investors, but um, making music projects is really difficult, especially when you want to put it out in a, in a real way and add vinyl and those kind of things. So uh, I didn't really know the challenge of doing it, but now I know. And I know I can do it, and so it'll be more music coming out in conjunction with exhibitions. So that's the music schedule for the year. And the rest is just exhibitions around the world, around the country. I'm doing something with HMAC. Um, I'll give you the date on that soon. We're still, we're still finalizing it. But, yeah, I'm in the city just curating, making work, and, and trying to have a – trying to push you to the next, you know, the next level. Yeah, no, I feel it. Uh, you know, as an interdisciplinary artist – it's really surprising to me sometimes, well, and not even just you, but with a lot of the artists that I've worked with in the past and that I follow, it's always so surprising to me, you know, when you see these large-scale paintings and then large-scale exhibitions, and then just to find out, it's like, oh, you have four records in the works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so, you know, we're really, um, we work quietly, especially within the last, you know, seven months. It's been definitely a long moment of incubation and conceptualization and trying to figure out how we can have the most positive effect for young collectors and um, not even just young collectors, but a whole new wave of collectors. I think that right now people are engaging with art in a totally new Absolutely. way, primarily digitally. So that's also something that's really exciting about what you're going to see this Thursday is the conversation between, you know, classic works and um, mixed media, but having a conversation about digital art and social media intertwining with, the old and the new. So you, it'll make more sense when you see it. Uh, and Hodge will, you know, get some language behind it. Absolutely. But, um, yeah, I think that, you know, all, all I really want to make sure everyone knows is that we're really doing this to teach y'all what is up. Like, if, if you're wanting to start collecting art, or even if you've been collecting art, but you're just kind of, you know, bored with the spaces that you'll find yourself in this is definitely you know a great place for you to come and engage we are going to be you know not only presenting a dynamic show but i think you'll be most pleasantly surprised by the audience that is going to come to see this group of artists and that's something that was really beautiful for me you know when we presented collector for the culture of one is i just truly felt like there was nobody that could walk in that space and not say like that's someone who looks like me you know everyone was just like belonged in that moment and that's you know what you were talking about like you don't yeah. have to go to maine to find this artist you don't have to go to california like everything is really right here in houston texas and you know we're really lucky to live in this city i'm not originally from houston but, uh, you know, I made this city my home, and it has definitely returned the favor and been just, like, such a warm embrace for me. Absolutely. So, this is just... Use is the wave, man. The, the uh, we also are shooting from Lawndale. I want to give a shout-out to Lawndale Art Center. I'm doing a residency here, so we're shooting in that studio in Lawndale. So, just want to give them a shout-out because they've been really taking great care of me, and I'm, I'm loving this residency program. So, that's, I just want to say that before we continue.
Yes, no, I'm happy you did. Uh, I just realized, though, that we haven't verbally stated all of the artists. Mm -hmm. um, most of them you can find on Instagram, but just to go down the list in this show, we've got Tyler Dubea, Rajab Ali Sad, mm -hmm. um, Dana Frankfurt, Kaneem Smith, Mark Flood, Jesse Lott, Floyd Newsom, uh, Patrick Renner, mm -hmm. and that's everyone. That's everyone. That's everyone. Um, a lot of those artists, for those of you that don't know, there's just a lot of overlapping history, um, specifically Jesse Lott and Floyd Newsom. Those are two of the original Project Row Houses founders, um, which is actually where I started my career in the arts. So shout out to Project Row Houses. And, um, PRH, you know, baby. PRH. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think that... It, it, it's a really special experience for me to watch everything come full circle and this isn't even really the end of the circle but it feels like we're going definitely into a new phase of what we're doing as you know black curators in the city black cur curators artists organizers arts administrators you know um shout out to love lady who's behind the camera right yes. now you know Thank who's you. got his whole other thing of merchandise going on as well as an exhibition that he just um assisted with at hmac as well so you'll be able to see you know a lot of really great things coming from just a whole new wave of black creators in the city and um we're just happy to be a part of it and we hope that everyone can get behind us and we want to see y'all all out on thursday oh and big shout out to um Avenac distillery they'll be sponsoring um black buddha events this year and uh they're just a great organic grain to glass distillery they've got gin vodka and uh, a new bourbon that they're releasing this year but they're just a really cool down-to-earth small business and you know i really love that about this city so happy to support and introduce them to a great new audience great well, yeah we're just gonna keep drumming down yeah, and uh good. wish everyone a happy week and we will see you on thursday see you on thursday have a protective day